Over 380 million years ago, complex life on planet Earth was mainly found in the oceans. At this time, terrestrial life was comprised of plants and arthropods. Conditions remained this way until some intrepid species took their first steps onto land. The footsteps these species created represented a landward journey the likes of which the planet had never seen before. This journey continues today. So, what do we know about these creatures? We know that they are originally confined to the oceans, with fins and gills similar to modern fish. Gradually, over the course of millions of years, species became specialised to survive in environments such as rivers. During this transformation, their limbs became stronger and more rigid, a development necessary to support their weight in shallow conditions. These newly evolved species, known as tetrapods, are defined by their four limbs, multiple digits and their solid vertebrae. Finally, for reasons that are not fully understood, these creatures made a crucial step that would affect the destiny of all future land-based life. Ireland's rich fossil record provides us with a unique window into the past. These remarkably preserved trace fossils represent evidence of maybe not the first steps, but certainly steps created by creatures that existed here over 380 million years ago. But in order for us to explore these steps further, we need to take a trip. Etched into the rock here at Duhilla, we find evidence of the very first tetrapod pioneers making this move from sea onto land. It was here in 1995 that geologist Ivan Stossel discovered the very first tetrapod track. It was a discovery that was groundbreaking, as it was the very first of its kind found in Europe. At this location, there is compelling evidence that a very community of individuals once thrived. Over six different pathways crisscross the surface with over 280 individual imprints. 145 of those imprints appear in the first trackway that was discovered by Stossel. It is imagined that the creature that made these tracks was over a meter long and had a width of about 30 centimeters. It was probably some early tetrapod, possibly a Campostiga. The next big discovery came in 2010 when a multinational team of experts uncovered a new trackway at Cusa Delis, 400 metres west of the original tracks. By now, Valencia Island was slowly being thrust into the Evolutionary Hall of Fame. This trackway, made up of 66 prints and covering just over 2 metres in length, differs slightly to those found at Duhilla, indicating that they were made by a creature with different body proportions. To most people this seems unimportant. However, what this actually tells us is that tetrapod diversification was well underway. The next and final discovery of Valencia occurred in 2011, three and a half kilometers to the southwest on Kulu Head. On further investigation, these marks were positively identified as being two individual trackways that cross each other, making a total of 80 prints. However, due to their poor state of preservation, not much more can be said about what creature may have made these tracks. This only serves to add another element of mystery to the tetrapod story. Today we are standing along the rugged coastline of the Atlantic Ocean, but if we were to go back 380 million years, you would see that we are standing on a floodplain somewhere in the tropics. Thanks to a series of random events, the tetrapod tracks here in Valencia Island have been preserved. Prior to the formation of the trackways, a huge mountain range called the Caladonite spread across this entire area. These peaks covered a stretch of land that extended from modern day Scotland to the Americas. From these mountains, large volumes of water flowed, creating rivers that carried huge amounts of sediment. 
which would eventually be deposited in rivers and vast floodplains. It was in these sediments that the movements of the creatures living at the time would be memorialised. In some trackways, for example Duhilla here on Valencia, marks left by the dragging of the creature's tail and abdomen showed that they were walking and not swimming, in contrast to some early theories. Perfectly preserved ripples also showed that these creatures inhabited what was once a riverbed. So, how were these prints preserved? Over millions of years, the sediment containing the prints were buried kilometres into the earth where extreme heat and pressure preserved them. The sediment, now rock, were then deformed, tilted and uplifted to the surface, leaving us with a spectacular outcrop. For millennia, these footprints remained dormant until the wild Atlantic weather began to strip away the surrounding rock, leaving exposed the footprints in the locations they are seen today. With other tetrapod trackways being found in countries such as Poland, Scotland and Australia, what makes the Valencia Island track so special? So when the tracks were being made, Valencia Island was situated some 200 miles from the coast. This shows that the tetrapods had evolved to live in the rivers as well as the ocean. The tracks also show us that limb development was well underway and the sheer size and amount of the tracks indicates that there was a large diverse community of tetrapods living in the area. The fossils found here on Valencia Island represent the landward invasion of complex life. This journey continued for millennia and brought with it diversity to the planet the likes of which had never been seen. It's easy to forget that these creatures were also living and breathing just like ourselves. Who knows, maybe millions of years from now we too will be a long forgotten race whose only lasting legacy are a series of footprints etched into rock.